Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. So we have been living at this new property here for one month now. And I can't believe it's been a month. It feels like we just moved in last week. We have been so busy. We have been so excited about everything and doing so much stuff every single day. It feels like we just moved in. And so to say that we've been here for a month is just, is just crazy. So it is September now. And in my old property, I would do garden tours every single month of the year. Even when I felt like there wasn't too much going on in my garden, when I would film it and then I would compare it to the month before, it would be like night and day changes. Like I could really see it. But day to day, I see this every day, all day long, I think, oh, nothing's changed. Everything's the same. I have nothing to show you, right? But that's the exact reason why you should be doing monthly garden tours for yourself. Even if it's just taking your cell phone out, snapping a couple pictures, or, or taking a quick video, just to see the changes in your garden every month. And you'd be surprised how much of a difference there actually is month to month. So when I had those feelings that we've, we haven't been here that long, I have nothing to show you, maybe I just won't do a September garden tour this month, I had to like kind of knock myself on the head and say, this is this is what you always talk about. This is what you always say. There might be, you might feel like there's nothing to show, but there's actually a ton of stuff to show. So I wanted to show you all that today, take you on a tour. I'm just gonna do a front and back tour in one video because I don't have much plants to plant to point out. I do have some, but um, there have been so many changes at this new property. And, uh, and I wanted to show them all to you today. So let's go. So I'll get started here with the front yard. The sun is setting. The evenings here are beautiful. They're so beautiful. It's quiet. We do live on a relatively busy street, but it's busy for the agriculture, like all the farmers, you know, and I see hay trucks and tomato trucks driving by. So when everybody goes home at night, it's quiet and it's beautiful and it's, it's just it's just amazing. And I wish I could have lived further out into the country, but of course I live in California where prices are insane. And so this, this is what we got, you know, kind of on a busy street, but I don't care. It's worth it. It is so nice. And it's times like this that I just cherish. And it makes me just think this, this is what we moved for. This is what we're doing all the work for this quiet that we have out here. So some of the things that we've done, first of all, you can see the big thing is the house got painted and that needed to happen so badly. The It's not completely done yet. We don't have the deck done and we don't have the pergola done, but the big thing is, is that we got the zigzag planter painted. Zigzag planter and then the house. The house was like this dirty, messy, cream color and the zigzag planter kind of matched it and it just it just looked like it needed some love so we painted the house white dove which is my favorite white color it's not like a bright white it's more like a creamy white it's the same white that's on the inside of my house and i just love the continuity of that i also think it looks really good with the roof and i'm leaning towards taking off this pergola right here but I don't want to do too much and be left with unfinished projects. Um, so we're just going to, we're just going to paint the pergola, but I have a feeling that we're probably going to take it out. This month, Michael Glassman, the landscape designer, did come and made a beautiful plan for this property, a beautiful plan. And I, we, we will be doing that, but it is going to take time just budget wise, right? If I had, you know, a lot of money to spend right now, I would get it all done right away. But instead, it's going to take a couple years. We're going to slowly work on it. Um, and so, you know, a lot of people will say, well, I thought you were taking out the zigzag planter. Well, not yet, right? And it's very easy when we're getting the house painted to have the painter paint the zigzag planter and you know, make it at least look nice for now. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing over the next years, honestly, is that we might do a couple things, throw a coat of paint on, put lipstick on a pig uh, with the goal of eventually changing it up. But I do have to say, having it painted, getting it planted up, oh my goodness, <laughs> it made all the difference in the world. When I was planting up the zigzag planter with my friend Robbie, I was actually starting to like it. I was actually thinking, this is, this is pretty. 
this is really, really pretty. So since he came, I have added to it. Um, I am learning what this planter needs. This is a new planter for me. This whole property is a new property for me. So I am kind of, this is going to be a learning experience to see what works. What I have here, there's a little bit of soil. I added a little bit of soil, but I added a ton of compost. And the problem with that is the compost is drying out very, very quickly. So I have, you know, a brick plant, planter, a cinder block planter, it's painted black, it's very warm, and then I have the compost on top of it and it dries out very quickly. You can see some of my Rudbeckia right there. These were up and happy earlier this morning and then by the end of the day, even though I've watered it twice, it kind of starts to droop like that. And so this is kind of a good example, I think, of why here in California or if you live in a really hot environment, you can't use compost as mulch. You have to actually use mulch. So this zigzag planter does need mulch so that it can retain some of its moisture so that these plants don't wilt with the heat as the heat goes on. Um, they're not looking too like this one this one maybe isn't looking this one's kind of struggling a little bit um, but like I said they're fine so I added a couple of the Rudbeckia um, I added a couple more I went to Green Acres when I first planted this up I planted it up with Robbie and I had gone to a big box store and I had gotten some plants and they were rough <laughs> Let's just say they were rough looking. I ended up taking about half of them out because they looked so bad. And I added in other plants that I had purchased from a local, um, a local nursery. It, Green Acres is my local nursery that I like going to. And the plants, they're just night and day. It's night and day. And it's just a good reminder to shop local, shop at your local garden center because they just have better quality stuff. It's just, it's just better quality. Um, so I got some more, uh, purple fountain grass, a little bit bigger ones. And then I got some of this verbena. I didn't have a ton of selection that I could choose from. I do have white flies. Look at this. I think that that's going to be something that I'm going to deal with out here is a lot of white flies. Um, and I, I need to get some pollinators here. I need to get some bug, good bugs here. Um, I'm not going to spray anything for the white flies. I just need to wait till, till I can attract some more pollinators to take care of it. So this is called Lascar Burgundy Verbena. Um, they're not looking fabulous. I just really like the color. I wanted something kind of bronzy. I, you know, I could have done mums, but mums don't stay blooming for us for that long. Um, and I wanted something kind of long blooming. So you have to think here, my first frost date isn't until December 4th. So I technically have three months, right? September, October, November, and I have three months that I get to enjoy these plants. And I have to remember that, you know, when I go to Home Depot and I spend barely any money and they're all not very nice plants that's three months that i'm going to be living with not very nice plants in here so you know I, I just think that i need to start thinking about fall planting a little bit more in subsequent years had i planted spring plants here like uh, super tunias or super or anything like that they probably would be lasting this long but if i wanted a fall look you know, I might just need to bite the bullet and, and enjoy three months of really, really good plants, right? And really invest in them. Um, the Rudbeckia that I got from the garden center is Rising Sun Chestnut Gold. I just thought they were so pretty. I bought them out. Don't go to the Elk Grove Green Acres because I bought every single one they had. And <laughs> I felt, I felt really bad about it, but they were just so pretty. They were just so beautiful so these will be perennials for me i will transplant them out somewhere and same with the verbena i'll transplant all those out somewhere whenever i uh plant up my bulbs right so november Dece probably december is when i'm going to put my bulbs in i'll take all of this stuff out and it'll be going dormant and i will put it in someplace else in my garden then the other thing you can see are my three big white pots. One, two, three. They're all hooked up on drip. That's the other thing that happened um, this month is that the whole drip system got revamped. The entire system. And that I hadn't planned on. We hadn't budgeted that in. We hadn't planned on it. But, you know... It's just, it absolutely needed to happen. I don't know why I'm showing you because you don't really, you can't really see anything. 
but it's all a whole brand new drip system. It's this Ratio system, which is what I used in my old home and I loved it. This is the professional one. Um, and it hooks up to my phone and I can turn on the zones on my phone on an app on my phone. And it's just such a fantastic system. So I paid to have an irrigation contractor come out and he added new zones everywhere. I know where they are. I know they're not broken. I, you know, I know how to turn them on and it's just kind of peace of mind. So I'm really glad that I did that. It was something that I wasn't planning on doing and I was planning on, you know, spending that money and spending that time on the pretty stuff. But when I actually stopped to think about it, I realized, okay, now is the time. Now is the time to take care of this kind of stuff, right? It, it absolutely needed to happen. There also was no irrigation in the center island right here. So I needed to get irrigation there somehow, right? So anyway, um, back to <laughs> the three white pots. They are hooked up on drip and now that they're hooked up on drip and getting regular water, they are kind of bouncing back. I cut them way, way, way back before I moved. And in here, the main thing in here is the Superbina Pink Cashmere, which is new for 2024. It is my favorite new annual, <laughs> hands down. And I will tell you all, spoiler alert, I will be putting them in the zigzag planter next year because I just love them so much. They're not, you know, it, it doesn't look amazing right now just because I cut it all back, but you can see I have new blooms here. You can see a bloom here. It's just, it's just the prettiest, prettiest superbina. It's so beautiful and it's so vigorous and so robust. It's just, Whew, I love it. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you is I did find heliotrope. You all know how much I love heliotrope. It is just the best smelling flower. And it is a zone, some of them say zone nine, hardy down to zone nine. A lot of them say hardy down to zone 10. So I never really know. Um, but when I find them at the garden center, I grab them because they're really, really hard to find for me at least. So I was able to pick up three of the heliotropes. And so I'm gonna leave them in here because I think having them up here in this zigzag planter, black zigzag planter, I think that they're gonna get lots and lots of heat over the winter. And so I'll leave them there and then transplant them out, out into the garden somewhere. But heliotrope is just, whew, it's just one of my favorite, absolutely. The other thing that we changed, well, painted, cleaned up <laughs> was our front area. I was able to have these two aqua pots right here, which was perfect because, you know, if I was to hook these up to drip, I would have a drip irrigation running right across where we walk. So that wouldn't have been very safe. Maybe if I put like a rug or something, I could go under there. But anyway, the aqua pot system is perfect because, you know, you only have to fill it up. For us here in California, you only have to fill it up maybe three days, maybe four days. I've been filling this up probably every four days and it's been fine. I have two Limelight Prime Hydrangeas in either one and I think that they look beautiful with the new uh, door color, which is Bear Rejuvenation. I was having quite issues <laughs> picking out this door color, um, same same with my office in the backyard, you'll see. Um, but I had planned on a different sage green color, but of course it looks different once you get it up. So this is, uh, this is rejuvenation and I think it's really, really pretty. So I do still have to get some black trim to go around all the sliders and to go around the windows. I think that that is needed, but for right now, I mean, what a huge improvement this is. Okay, and then I'm sure you noticed this pile of concrete right here. <laughs> These are all the stepping stones that were, they were all the way around on the north side of the house and they were all right here. And I just got so tired of looking at them. I just, I just don't like them. They're these concrete that have been, um, I don't know, poured into like pieces of wood. And I just, I just don't like them. So I'm going to put them on. I'm going to see if anybody wants them. I'm going to put them for free on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or something like that. And if nobody wants them, then I will just, um, we're going to get a dumpster anyway. Cause we, like you'll see, we have like a pile of garbage, um, that it, we just, we, you know, it's moving, it's the moving stuff. Um, so maybe we, we can get one of those dumpsters that can take concrete as well. The problem with that though, is that they have been here and this was our walkway to get to our front door. And now there's, there's nothing. This is landscape fabric right there. So I have to find some Thing to use as a walkway just temporarily because of course the plan that Michael Glassman 
came up with was to cut off the zigzag planter about right there and then have like a whole fence gate type of thing. But I still need something temporarily, especially when it starts raining, I'm gonna need something there. This pot is here because there's some rub uh, rebar right there that we, we just wanna make sure everybody, nobody steps on or anything. But what we think we found some pictures and the zigzag planter actually went all the way to the fence if you can believe it. And so somebody took out, already took out some of the zigzag planter um, and stopped it right here. Uh, so I, I don't know why, I'm not totally sure. If the zigzag planter went all the way to the fence, how on earth did you get in the front door? Maybe because this part over here, the bunny bungalow, that was the old house. Maybe this was like their backyard or something like that before the addition got put on. I don't know. I, I mean, that's what happens, I guess, when you have old houses is that things get added on and then changed and, and it just ends up kind of, kind of being a mess. And so we're just, we're just trying to figure it out. Just trying to, just trying to clean it up. Okay. Then one of the first things we got done is taking the palm trees out. There was a palm tree right there and there was also a palm tree right there. So those needed to come out because we are in Northern California where palm trees are not natural and it just didn't go with anything. There was also some Lady Banks roses that looked like trees. They were right here covering the propane tank and we had this fence that was around it. Jason just took down the fence and he just, um, the, he just, the arborist helped us, helped us take out the Lady Banks roses, which were, oh my, they were like, five times as hard as taking out the palm trees. Um, and then Jason just took out the stumps. So we are going to move the propane tank. I talked about this a little bit earlier this week. We are going to move the propane tank, but we're having a little bit of trouble with like the propane company and getting somebody out here. Um, so it's, it's just kind of a waiting game. So that is absolutely not going to stay there. It's either going to go in that front corner up there or that back corner over there. So we don't know yet which one it's gonna be. We obviously want it to be in the easiest, safest place and I will work around it with my planting, but it obviously, it has to move. <laughs> it definitely has to move. And then behind there, I'm sure you've seen in almost all my videos, the orange cone that I have right here. And the orange cone covers this septic tank access point, which is, in the worst possible spot that you could have you could have it um they put rocks here so that nobody drives over the access point but the problem is is when you're in a car it's really hard to see the rocks so um we've actually had three kind of accidents with the rocks already so far one of them has been jason and um so we put this cone up just to make sure that everybody knows you know because we have a lot of people coming here to help you know, working workers and stuff like that. And then our friends are coming to visit and we're constantly like, watch the rocks, watch the rocks. Cause we don't want anyone else, you know, to run into it. So we have to figure out what to do with that. Um, whether it's like, you know, put up a little fence or, or something. Um, but, but we will figure it out. So Jason and I spent some time adding in the hose links so that we would have hoses all around here which has been amazing so now these hose hose links can reach every single part of our property which is just fantastic so now that i have irrigation and i have hose access i feel like i can really start planting things and know that i'm going to be able to take care of it because otherwise you know who knows so i did plant robbie the willow my friend Robbie from Visit Our Garden, he came and he helped me plant this. He actually gifted me this willow as a housewarming present. And it's beautiful. And, you know, when you plant something like this, you know that there's going to be a little bit of stress from planting it, which I completely expected. So I've noticed a little bit of yellowing of the leaves. Um, but overall, it looks it looks okay. And as you can see. But that's okay. That's okay. It, he's totally fine. And these are so easy to grow. And I think it'll be a really good spot for it, especially because I am going to stake this up. Don't worry. I'm going to stake it up better. Um, we just had a really windy day. So as it was windy, I came out here and I put this little strap on, but it seems to be working pretty well. We are going to take out these plum trees right here. 
these two, the burgundy leaved ones, they are ornamental plums. And for one thing, they're an absolute mess. And then for a second thing, the arborist told us that they're not long for this world. They're going to start, they've actually already started declining and they're going to start being pretty big problems for us. So I figured I don't want to plant anything around something that's on its way out. And so I thought, okay, well, let's just take them out now so that I can figure other things out, like putting this willow right here. So I'm on the list for the arborist to come out and take those out whenever we do have time. So then, you know, we have to kind of figure, figure this out as well. Coming over here, the other thing that we did is we took out this raised bed. There was this random raised bed right here. <laughs> Don't ask me why. And there's the stuff from it. Um, we spread it all out. And again, I'm not doing anything in this area right here yet because I want to see if the propane tank is going to go there. I'm, I want to reuse this stuff because uh, this corrugated metal is kind of going to be part of my country romance theme um, <laughs> in this property. And so like corrugated metal is how how country romance is that? It's perfect. So I have, I'll show you all in the back, but I have a bunch of very beautiful shrubs from Spring Meadow, Proven Winter Spring Meadow, that I am planning to do a bunch of fall planting. And most of it is going to be in the orchard here. What I need to do, my next step is get some cardboard, put some cardboard down, and then put some more compost over it um, to kind of prep the area. Now the thing is, so I guess you would call that no-till or no-dig garden bed is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to till this area on purpose because um, I think it's better for the soil. The, the thing that you can do with that is you do want to plant your trees and you want to plant your big shrubs first and then you can kind of work around it. You can put the cardboard or you can put like six layers of newspaper down around it and then put compost all around that. So I'm going to be working on that this upcoming week so that I can start planting. Now that it's getting a little bit cooler, I can start planting a lot of those shrubs and I'll show you those in the backyard. I do want to point out this wall real quick, just so we all can see it, right, for Sept early September, because this is one of my projects that I'm excited to start working on. I this I wanted this to be one of my first projects, um, and I had to hold myself back. I had to, you know, there was other things that I needed to do and I needed to focus on before I could start stuff like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put an espalier up here. I think I'm going to do a star jasmine espalier because I think it'll just, oh, I just think it'll be so beautiful. So this is something that I'm planning to work on this upcoming month and I'm so excited about it. Same as um, my living walls. This area right here is going to be my secret shade garden where I'm going to put all my shade plants like my hydrangeas and my hostas and I'm going to have two arches with living walls of honeysuckle on either side. So I want to get those started in the fall so that they have all winter to root in and grow and then next year they can take off, right? So I got to get those in as well. But again, I, you know, that's, that's not something that we needed to start with. <laughs> so the backyard is beautiful. It is so beautiful. This backyard has so much potential. So what we did is we've put in these garden beds. These garden beds are no-till garden beds. There is cardboard underneath here. You can still see some of it back there. And then there's about six to eight inches of compost in these ra these aluminum raised beds. Again, the corrugated metal. And then around here are wood chips. These are actually the palm trees. There was two palm trees back here that the arborist took out. Um, and those, those palm tree wood chips are back here that I'm going to use as kind of like a pathway. So I actually already have some flowers that I've direct sown, some sunflowers and um, some amaranth and a couple other things, uh, some zinnias, maybe. I don't, like I said, we have three months until our first frost date. So I'm going to see what I can get growing in that amount of time. I still have to hook all these up to irrigation. I've been hand watering them, but it doesn't bother me because I have to hand water all of these as well. There's just, you know, there's just all these little things that it's taking a long time to get everything together, um, but I don't care. I'm having fun with it and each day it's, you know, I can see the potential. So in the middle here, I did put this to tour that I built 
back when we lived in our old house. I don't think this tutor will stay here. Um, I don't know what I'm going to put here and here in the middle. I'm going to put something, whether it be like a container with some flowers in it or something, but I have this spot right here to kind of have something. And then my plan is, is to have my greenhouse back here. Um, so I have my two iceberg rose standards. I, again, I don't know if I'm going to leave them there, but I liked, I liked how they looked here. And then I'm going to put my greenhouse back here. And I know what type of greenhouse I want. I know what type I'm looking at. But again, we're not ready to get it going yet. I still have three months, right, to kind of think about it. So I'm just kind of taking my time. One thing about having the greenhouse right back here is it covers up kind of half covers up this beautiful barn. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous barn. And then when the horse is walking around, oh my goodness, it's it makes me want to just take down this fence completely. It's so beautiful. And that will be, having the greenhouse back here will be stealing from that vista a little bit, but I think I'm okay with that for now. Eventually, when we, you know, budget wise, there will be a pool back here and then the barn will be in, you know, you'll, you'll completely see the barn and it'll be absolutely beautiful. But I think for right now, I'm going to have a greenhouse right there. What I want to do, and this is going to take some, like actually having someone in construction come out and build this. What I eventually want to do, this is my office. I eventually want to put a door in the back of my office and then extend out this area right here. And this is going to be my greenhouse. So once we get the pool uh, and everything like that, this is going to be my greenhouse extending on the back part of my office. And it it'll just, it'll be so perfect. It's, it's like the perfect place for it. This is my gorgeous Chinese pistache tree. And this is a deciduous tree, meaning it loses all its leaves in the winter. So when I want this greenhouse to have that hot, hot sun, there's going to be no leaves on this tree. When during the summer, when I really don't want it to be too sunny, it's going to be blocked. The sun's going to be shaded by this Chinese pistache. So that's the ultimate, right? Ultimately where it's going to go, but at least for the next couple years, because pools cost a lot, a lot of money. Um, at least for the next couple years, I want to have, you know, like a temporary greenhouse. And when I say temporary, it's, it's a couple years. So we will see how it goes. I, I am not spending big bucks on a greenhouse. I will never purchase. I don't want to say never. I really don't think I'm going to be spending, you know, buying one of those glass greenhouses. We just don't need that here in California. Um, but I'm not going to say never. I'm not going to say never. You never know. So anyway, that's my plans for the backyard. We still have a lot of stuff we kind of need to clean up. The deck is getting painted at least this weekend, if not maybe a little earlier. I'm just waiting on Andrew, Andrew the painter, um, for when he finishes up a couple other jobs to get out here and paint this hideous red deck. I, oh, I just can't wait till it's gone. You know, <laughs> I can't wait till it's gone. It will be gone soon and it will make such a huge difference. I have started laying things out and I did put um, the table up there. I hadn't done that. I, it was all kind of here in a jumbled mess, but then I just thought, okay, well, we have probably like two or three weeks before the deck gets painted. We might as well use it. Um, and it's kind of nice because we can see how, how we're using it, how we're, how we're doing things. My pathway from the back door to my office over here, I walk this pathway like 20 times a day or something like that. So I know I need to keep this space kind of clear um, so I can get back there. And then I, I don't know, I somehow want to do something like maybe another step right there, maybe some stepping stones walking over here to my office, something like that. But I, but I walk that way all the time. So it's something, it's something that I have to think about now that I'm living in the house, living in the property. Um, you know, I can start thinking about these things. Okay. Here are all my beautiful shrubs. I wish, I wish I could lay them out a little bit nicer. You can see how they're laid out. They're laid out so that I can water them very easily. I have my hose link that I installed and then I can just go through and I can just water all of them. Right. And so as soon as I get the beds prepped, as soon as I get the beds prepped, I can start planting these guys out and it's going to be so beautiful. And it's actually really, really good to do fall planting when you live in a hot environment because 
everything's going to settle in and it's not going to be, you know, when you're in summer, sometimes we have no summer. Sometimes it goes straight from kind of cold winter. We're just out of our last frost to hot, hot summer. And, it, and it's a bit much for plants that don't have a really good developed root system. So it's really important to do fall planting when you live in a hot area. So that's what my plan is for this. I have more plants coming, if you could believe it. <laughs> so I got to get things, you know, got to get things prepped and ready so that I can start planting these. So just get ready. I have a lot of planting videos. I have some beautiful, beautiful plants to show you all. Um, this one, this is pillow top gardenia. I've already showed you all this one. It just smells so good. So good. And then this one over here, this is called La Vida Moss, uh, Hawthorne. Oh my goodness, look at that one. So these plants are really, really good for us. Um, oh, let's see, Levita moss. There's the real name for it. Raphiolepsis. These plants are really, really good for us, but they don't bloom for very long. Uh, hawthorns, they don't bloom for very long. Um, these are bred to bloom for a very, very long time throughout the season. And I can see that because they're already blooming right now and it's September and their blooms are beautiful. So these don't get very big. I'm excited. I'm going to do a whole kind of swath of them up in the orchard and I think it'll be really pretty. Okay, I do want to point out my office. My office got painted. You can see the green color. This is the Rejuvenation by Bear. It looks beautiful. I have my um, Century Stone Aqua Pots on either side ready to be planted up. Um, I just think it looks so good. I think it looks great. I am going to be getting an awning for over here and maybe like a metal sign over here. But just the difference, it's just made such, such an incredible difference. So over here, I have plans. Uh, we, Michael Glassman and I talked about it in our video. And so that, that will be coming. Um, I have them in my metal workshop. Don't look in the metal workshop. It is an absolute mess, <laughs> but we're working on it. And you can see, we still have this pile of compost that I just want to get out of here so badly. All this compost is going, like I said, over the cardboard in the front garden bed, uh, the orchard garden bed. And so, we, you know, we just have, we just have to get around to that. I actually, I think I'm going to go to the dump because, um, Apparently there's like cardboard recycling at the dump and you can just go in and you could get cardboard. So I have, I still have a lot of cardboard, but if I could get like big sheets of cardboard, I think that would be amazing. Again, if you see pots turned upside down, it's because there's super, super dangerous things just sticking up all over this place, the place on this property. Um, so this needs to be cut off. I think there's concrete in there. Um, so, you know, we need to go around and we need to do like a safety check with all this stuff so that we don't hurt ourselves. Um, there's another one over here. You can see right there. So if you ever see something like that, just, just know it's just kind of a safety check for us. I just want to show you all one more look back here. I am just, I am so pleasantly surprised at how much I just love it back here, especially around sunset as the sun is setting back there. It's just beautiful. It's so, so pretty. I can hear the goats. They're pretty calm. Sometimes they're not as calm <laughs> around feeding time, but it's just beautiful. It's just exactly what I wanted. Country romance living. I just, I love it. So you can see how much we've done in the past month. We have done so much and it just, it takes me walking around with a camera like this and talking to all of you for 30 minutes, 45 minutes to see, to really remind myself what, what we've been doing. Yes, it's been a lot of the foundational stuff, a lot of the fundamentals that maybe aren't so pretty, but we need to do all that stuff before we move on to the next step. It's super important and this is, this is the time to do it so that we don't have to, you know, cut back any plants or dig up anything uh, to get things done. So I am just, I am having so much fun. This has been such a fun month. It's been a whirlwind. Like I said, it feels like we've only been here for a week, but we've been here for a month, which I can't believe it. Um, I do think that we're going to start kind of slowing down a little bit. I feel like we're living here now, as opposed to like just staying here. I feel like this is our home now, which is, which I'm really, really excited about. I think the girls think it's their home now. They feel like it's their home. We're getting settled, which is, which is huge. So I just want to say 
Thank you all so much for following along. Your excitement makes me even more excited. And I know my excitement makes you all excited, but it's just been so much fun to share this with all of you, to document this. And, you know, every day I'm so excited to put out my new video just to say, look what we did now, look what we did now. So I appreciate you all watching so much. I appreciate your sweet comments. I appreciate all your emails. I appreciate all your suggestions. Cause yes, I am new to country living. This is new to me and I am, I am new, let's just say. So all the advice you all give is, is oh, thank you. Really, really appreciate it. So I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.